Good morning, everybody, and thanks for watching. So I often thought that Peter was a coward when he denied the Lord three times. But then I thought that Jesus himself told him that before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. So if Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself, declared to Peter and told Peter that this would happen, what power within him did Peter have to deny what Jesus Christ said he would do? And the answer is, of course, he had no power. If Jesus said he was going to do it, he was going to do it. He didn't have a free will. And when Jesus said that, Peter, you're going to deny me, do you think that's something he wanted to do? Oh yeah, I want to deny the Lord? No. It's something he couldn't avoid. And that's with everything that Jesus says and with every declaration that comes from God. Every detail, every moment of every single life plays out based on God's declaration, based on His will. Human beings have no free will to combat that. The only free will in all of creation is the Creator itself. So Peter was powerless, just as Judas was powerless and had to do what was foretold that he would do. So that interaction itself completely disproves human free will. But anyway, that's not really what I want to talk about here. Yeah, I used to think that Peter was a coward, but then, you know, you're denying Jesus Christ, the one you've walked around with for the past three years, the one who called you and you became intimate friends with, and you denied him three times. But then I thought again, a few hours earlier in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter drew his sword and sliced the ear off the Roman soldier who was part of the group that came with Judas to apprehend Jesus Christ. So now I'm thinking, oh, what a coward. But in the garden, it's like, man, what a manly act. What a brave and courageous thing to draw your sword and fight to the death. When you draw a sword, you have to be ready to fight to the death. I mean, it's not like flying a drone when you're sitting in a base a thousand miles away with the remote control bombing people. It's not the same thing. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you draw a sword on someone, especially a soldier, a Roman soldier, an occupying force in your land, you have to be ready to die. So Peter was ready to fight and die tooth and nail for the Lord Jesus Christ in that garden against Roman soldiers. And then a few hours later, a little girl asks him, Aren't you the one that was with Jesus? And he denies even knowing Jesus. Three times. So what would bring someone from drawing a sword and willing to fight to the death for someone to literally denying that they know that person a few hours later? And I'm going to get into that in a moment here. Sometimes I think that it was still fresh in Peter's mind when the Lord told him, you're going to deny me three times. He was thinking about that. He said, how am I going to deny the Lord? I love the Lord. I'm willing to die for him. Remember when he said, um, when Jesus was talking about how he must be given up and suffer and do all these things. And Peter said, oh, we'll never let that happen, Lord. And he said, get behind me, Satan. So from the very beginning, Peter and the disciples didn't really understand what Jesus meant when he said he had to suffer and die and do all these things. 
But that was still probably fresh in Peter's mind. The Lord said, I'm going to deny him. There's no way I'm going to deny him. I'll show myself. I'll show him. I'll show everyone around me that I'm up to the task. I'm not going to deny him. So when the Roman soldiers came, he maybe overreacted and pulled out that sword just to prove to himself and everybody else that he would ne never deny the Lord. Whatever the case may be, he drew his sword and was ready to fight till death. And here's, here's why he drew the sword, I believe. Um, partly because, you know, and this is just speculation on my part, to overcompensate for being told that he was going to deny the Lord. But also because the disciples and Peter were looking forward to an earthly kingdom that the Lord was going to set up. And they're willing to fight for that kingdom and fight for the Lord till the death for that kingdom, to join forces with the Messiah, with the Son of God. They were willing to do that, to work hand in hand to bring about this kingdom. But what did Jesus say to Peter? He said, put that sword away. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And Jesus could have called legions of angels just by a thought. He could have wiped out the scribes and the Pharisees, the Roman soldiers and all these people. He was laying down his life. No one took it from him. So he could have demolished them at any point. But that's not the way it was going to go. That's not the way Jesus was going to do things. That wasn't the plan. Jesus Christ just got through praying three times to the Father. If this cup can pass for me, if there's any other way to do this, then let me know. And God was silent. So there was no other way but for Jesus to go to the cross. Jesus knew that. Peter wanted to fight with his sword. Jesus told him to put it away. Because that's not the way this was going to happen. Jesus could have done that and destroyed everybody at any time. But that's not how he was going to redeem all of creation. So fast forward now a few hours when Jesus is arrested and about to enter his suffering and death, then the very man who pulled out the sword to fight to the death denies even knowing Jesus because he didn't understand the suffering and the death that Jesus would have to go through. He understood, Peter did, fighting for the kingdom and joining forces with the Lord and being with him. He certainly understood that, but he didn't understand that his Messiah, that the Son of God, would have to suffer in death to accomplish the kingdom and to accomplish the salvation of all creation. And so I relate that to Christianity and religion today. So many times you hear Christians, and, and you just, it comes across my feeds all the time. You listen to how they're going to right the wrongs of the world, whether it's following DT or, you know, overcoming this evil. And there's an obvious evil over the whole world, forming this, this system and, you know, cutting our energy and cutting our supplies and making us do things that aren't what we want to do, put things into our body that we don't want to put in our body all this stuff and it's getting worse and worse every day but you listen to factions of Christians they I saw a guy with a shirt the other day you know talking about work for God you know and I heard another guy say uh, you know God is a motion sensitive God when you move God reacts no no you know well, I don't want to get into that right now, that we can't do anything unless God causes us to do it. That's clear in Scripture. But these religious folk, these Christians, they're ready to pull out the sword. They want to fight for Jesus. They want to bring about the kingdom. They want to lock arms with Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, we're with you. You know, we'll take care of this. We're going to overcome this evil. We're going to unite. The human spirit is going to overcome this evil whether it's led by a, a former president or whether it's 
um, assisted by some outside force. Together, we're going to unite and do what's right in order to destroy this evil and set up a kingdom. But even these Christians don't seem to understand the book of Revelations, which I don't claim to be an expert, but a lot of them do. But when Jesus comes to this earth, he is going to destroy the most evil political and religious control that has ever been on the earth. So if these people think that they're going to right all the wrongs and overcome this evil and unite together, then they're going to become the new evil that Jesus is going to destroy if they truly believe they're in the end times. Because if we're in the end times and the evil kingdom and religion and political system that Jesus is going to be destroyed has is going to destroy has to be there then if you are the new kingdom you have to be that evil it's like it doesn't translate for them but again I I'm, I digress so Christians are willing to pull out the sword and fight for Jesus and do their thing overcome their sin follow law come up with some act of themselves to join with Jesus and fight for Jesus and they'll fight all the way tooth and nail but when you present the death entombment and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone being enough to establish your righteousness they completely deny him just like Peter did in front of the little girl in the courtyard and the two other people that asked him and he denied even knowing Jesus Christians who will pull out the sword and fight and say they're gonna overcome their sin and make everything right and create this system that overcomes the evil when they're faced with the cross of Christ alone and the power of that cross they deny Jesus why else would when we talk to Christians or when we talk to religious people when we herald the cross we herald the power of the cross it's so much po more powerful than what they believe in they believe in a weak cross that's there but it really hasn't done anything unless you come to faith or unless you follow the rules in order to get to that cross that's a weak cross because it props up humanity to have to be strong enough and powerful enough to enact the cross and make it work where the cross we herald and the cross that's heralded in scripture that Paul's gospel talks about is one of pure unadulterated grace it's Jesus's death his entombment and his resurrection alone that saves us alone that justifies us alone that gives us our righteousness it's nothing we have done to get it there's nothing we can do to maintain it there's nothing we can do to lose it. It's God's plan. That's the way that we're saved, through the death, entombment, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not by pulling out the sword and overcoming our sin and setting things right before Christ gets here. The world's going to be evil and the system's going to be in control when Christ returns we are sinners it's the death entombment and resurrection of Jesus Christ that has taken care of our sin not us overcoming our sin Jesus said to Peter put the sword away Christians need to understand they need to put the sword of self-righteousness away of them overcoming their sin of them fighting for the Lord hooking hands like he he needs them to set up the kingdom for him to overcome their own sin that he died for Jesus is saying the same thing he said to Peter in the garden of Gethsemane put your sword away to the Christians I don't need you you don't need your self-righteousness I can call legions of angels Peter in a second can wipe every Roman soldier there is to dust 
that's not the way I'm doing this. I already asked God for another way. There, he said, in his, in his silence, he said no. So there is no other way. And to the Christian, he says the same thing. Your self-righteousness, your overcoming this. There is, there is no other way but my death, entombment, and resurrection. Adding anything to that, you're pulling out your sword. Embracing what Christ has done alone is difficult. For Christians to comprehend because they want that sword out they want to fight but in doing so they deny what Jesus Christ is and what he has done put the sword away we are saved all creation is saved eventually by the death entombment and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone and we participate in that for our righteousness and it is not of us it is all of him.